village, Burton Green. I've lived here for 37 years and I'm immensely proud of where I live. For those who don't know where Burton Green is, we're situated on the outskirts of Kenilworth, near Coventry in the county of Warwickshire. <laughs> There are three main focuses to the village. The school, the village hall, and the greenway. We're just your average village in the countryside. We have a range of farms and small local businesses, from horse breeders to a cattery. Behind me is Burton Green, common land which in the 19th century would have been the centre of the community with two up, two down cottages um, clustered around it. 100 yards down Hob Lane is Burton Green Church of England Village School which was founded in 1842. Well I started this school in 1938 and at that time I presume but looking back, it was the hub of my world just to meet my friends here every day. We had two fantastic teachers, Miss Banks, who was my first teacher, and Miss Gibbs, who was the headmistress and taught the older children. Before the 1940, on the 26th of September, my sister and I had just come home from school and we suddenly said, oh, look at that big plane. It was a German bomber going to bomb the Standard Motor Company. Well, welcome to Burton Green Village Hall. This is a village hall that is run by a group of trustees on behalf of the village. Um, I'm the former chairman and we have a very, very healthy little hub here that is the centre of the village. We don't have a shop, we do have a school, however, but the village hall is very important for, the, for all age groups in Burton Green. We have lots and lots of activities and I don't think I can honestly say we have a day when the hall's not used by somebody in the village. The Kenilworth Greenway, where to start? This is a fantastic asset to the local community. We talk about it as a green corridor linking the town with the countryside and although these communities are surrounded by Greenbelt. This is a very exceptional place in that anybody can easily get out into our beautiful tranquil countryside, whether they're walking, cycling, in a wheelchair or whatever. That's what the Greenway is about. This Greenbelt that it cuts through is very, very important to many thousands of people in this area. This wood and the Greenway over there, the reasons, some of the reasons I came to live here. Uh, peacefulness, tranquility, freedom, and being able to come out here and just breathe the air in the wood. It's fantastic, and particularly at this time of year with the bluebells, it's just beautiful, isn't it? An ancient wood is what's grown up from the end of the last ice age when the glaciers retreated, and this wood would have been here for about 10,000 years at least. Um, historical records for this wood go back to 1542. That in itself would define it as an ancient wood. I served in World War II. I was a sailor. The tender age of 19, I went to Omaha Beach on D-Day. I also served in the Arctic. 700 men died aboard the kind of ship that I served in. In fact, I'm told that of the Arctic people who uh, are left alive, I'm one of 200. I'm concerned with the land and the peopling of the land, and this is why I'm standing here to this day. I look at each tree, as a living testimony to life in general. Within the village, we have several listed buildings. Well, we've lived in this house for come over 10 years now. Um, it's a much loved family home. Um, it is a grade two listed building and it sits on agricultural land effectively and in a very protected part of the green belt between Kenilworth and Coventry. 
In January 2012, the go-ahead was given to High Speed Rail 2, which will plough straight through the middle of our village. This crisis and struggle is nothing new to us. Back in the 1980s, there were plans to build a super pit here. However, we fought, stood our ground and managed to stop the pit. We've done it before and we will do it again. We will fight to save Burton Green. We've greatly affected as the railway runs through the parishes of Stoneley and Burton Green alongside us. And it will affect a lot of our people in many ways and most importantly, the environment between Kenworth and Coventry, which is very special to us. And of course, Burton Green itself will be devastated if the railway cuts through the middle of the village as is planned at the moment. We've learnt recently that it probably doesn't have any foundations, um, which may be a bit of a problem if HS2 comes near us. Uh, if, HS2, if we could believe that HS2 was in the national interest, our feelings may, may be we would understand it a bit more, but we don't understand um, that it's in the national interest. Irrespective of whether you agree with the construction of this train or not, people have to realise that its impact on the population as a whole, either financially or for the people who live adjacent to the line, is going to be enormous. If we say the cutting would be 50 metres wide on completion, and the end of it, while it's being constructed, that could be 100 to 125 metres wide. Now that ground will be completely ruined for years. A quick analogy, further along the line, there is a cross-country gas pipeline that follows the light route. When that was put in, and we're now talking a 28-inch pipe, or thereabouts, the farmers who own that land couldn't use that area where that had been constructed for over four years. What's different about an ancient wood is that it's a community of species, plants, animals, insects, fungi, microbes in the, soil, in the soil and bacteria. They're all interdependent and they've been here really for the 10,000 years interacting with the soil and of course the soil, all those things are dependent upon the underneath, underlying geology and also the topography of where the wood is. So these are things you can't replace, it's just absolutely impossible. Any suggestion that you could remake an ancient wood somewhere is just absolute fantasy. If it goes ahead, it will have a knock-on effect on all people in England, not just people up and down the track. I come from Australia and um, I'm very conscious of what brings people to England and one of it is the, the tourist industry and all the things it has to offer. And one of them is uh, the ability to walk through fields and tracks and historic areas which you don't necessarily find in Australia. This is a real village with real people, it's not just pixels on a computer. And this thin line actually turns into a number of compulsory purchase orders. So on my right, you've got three houses. On my left, you have five houses. Then there's six more over there and the extra one. So this brings up quite a few, the one there. And then as you look this way, you'll find that um, you're going along the ledge of, uh, length of Hodgetts Lane, which gives you another 11 houses plus the village hall. So in summary, they've chosen possibly the worst possible method to come through our village. We were served, well rather the clerk to the trust was served with a notice to say that they would be knocked down. So I mean we have no option but to move. But I mean by the time, if I live to be about 95, I'll be moving at 95 which is disgusting. I've been running Hedgerow Nursery and Preschool Centre for nearly 20 years. Uh, we basically serve the local school, Burton Green School. Our route to taking the children and bringing them home from school is via the bridge that is there now. Uh, we're very environmentally aware nursery. Apart from the environmental issues, um, we have a big, big concern about how we're going to keep the children that we do have because we won't be able to take them to our local school. Um, because of the bridge not being there. Um, and also we may lose other siblings of the nursery that um, come here as well from beyond the bridge. So it is a very, very, it's a big worry. We're a small business, small nursery, been here 20 years, and it's gonna make a, quite a large impact without being dramatic. If 
construction does go ahead, alternative arrangements for children to walk down Cromwell Lane to the school um, would not be acceptable unless they were able to continue to walk in a straight route down Cromwell Lane. We've got four-year-olds already walking nearly two miles to school and to add an extra half a mile to that is not acceptable. There has been um, lots of research in Europe about the effects of noise on the cognitive development and learning of children and so whilst the school itself might be a distance away from the line, the children who attend the school will be severely affected and therefore we would have concerns about that. My son is one of the top show jumpers of the wor world. He's lying in fourth position. He could, I could be first today after a wonderful win in uh, Hamburg the, uh, yesterday. The MPs who travel abroad, uh, it's only to say that we have a high-speed rail. Standing here now, OK, we have a road up there. It isn't too bad. Down here, it's quiet. You can hear all the birds singing. There's no interruptions. A train rattling along every so many minutes will put the birds to flight. Nothing will settle long enough to nest or even just come up like the pheasants do onto the lawn to eat the corn that we put out. The importance of the land, I, I can't emphasise enough, it's totally paramount to everything we do with these horses. Mothers and young horses can run in and out free range and they become used to a very relaxed environment. We uh, are getting on in years now, but our children and grandchildren are all coming along and all look forward to enjoying the facility that we've enjoyed for the last 25 years. Unfortunately, HS2, however wonderful it may be, will remove that way of life. This spot here is a critical point on the route because the choice of the route coming up from Heathrow to Birmingham and further north means that the line of HS2 has to cross the existing main line somewhere and that point is right here. Now in order to get over the line the plan is to put a viaduct right up on top of all these electrical wires here which means that the HS2 will be about 10 metres above the ground level where we're standing at the moment. This is Riddings Hill on the side of Borsal Common closest to Berkswell Station. The important thing to bear in mind here is that with these houses on a hill and the railway line also elevated in the air over that side, that they're in direct earshot of the trains which meant to come by every two minutes in total. If we lose those trees, then sadly, what we were left with? Concrete, bridges, the abomination that we might see if we sail down the River Thames, things like the gherkin. Who the hell wants to look at a gherkin? You can eat those. Burton Green is probably the community most directly affected by HS2. I think Burton Green deserves special consideration, and that's certainly the argument that I have been making to the Secretary of State and to others. And it seems to me also that we have to think about the proper level of mitigation for Burton Green. Now, I think that a cut and cover tunnel, as it's referred to, is better than an open cutting, but I also think that a deep bore tunnel is better than a cut and cover tunnel. And I think if we were to secure that for Burton Green, it would avoid the worst effects of the railway. And I think that would preserve the remarkable community that Burton Green is for the future. We are not Nimbus. We are a community in crisis. We are the guardians of our heritage. We are the stewards of this heritage, protecting it for future generations. Thank you.